Hi everyone and welcome back to another video. My name is Courtney if you don't know me already. So in today's video we are checking out the XB70 Val. Val cry. This video is from US Military News Channel. They're a fantastic channel. I highly recommend checking them out. So hopefully you guys enjoy watching along with me. If you have anything to add, just leave a comment down below. If you learned anything new, leave it down below as well. Let's get started into the video. Alrighties, let's get started. What See the? this plane? It's America's Mach 3 super bomber that you never heard what? about. The... What? The North American XB-70 Valkyrie was the largest and fastest bomber ever built by the United States, but the massive six-engine Mach 3 capable jet never entered production. This is crazy. They're definitely right. I've never seen this before. <laughs> Only one surviving prototype sits in a museum in Dayton, Ohio, even as the Boeing B-52 it was supposed to one day replace continues to soldier on. Named Valkyrie after the female battle I spirits of Norse mythology, the bomber was built to penetrate Soviet it's air defenses in an aircraft, in my opinion. Nuclear war and deliver thermonuclear bombs oh, on like targets. <laughs> the XB-70 was 196 feet long, 31 feet tall at the tail, and had a maximum gross weight of 521,000 pounds. The Valkyrie was fabricated using stainless steel honeycomb sandwich panels and titanium. It was designed to make use of a phenomenon called compression lift, achieved when the shock wave generated by the airplane flying at supersonic speeds supports part of the airplane's weight. This unique characteristic reduced drag and was one of the secrets of the XB-70's performance. The idea behind the XB-70 originated in the 1950s, when it was assumed even greater speeds and altitudes would enable American bombers to survive against Soviet air defenses unmolested on their way to delivering their doomsday payloads. At the time, the only effective defense against bombers were fighters and anti-aircraft artillery. Even then, anti-aircraft guns were only marginally effective, and interceptors were increasingly challenged by ever-improving bomber performance. But the introduction of the first Soviet surface-to-air missiles in the late 1950s changed that picture dramatically. Suddenly, the XB-70 were much more vulnerable, and even its Mach 3 speeds could not guarantee its survival. A, to cope with the rising threat aircraft. I, can, I can't get over it. Threat ...of Soviet missiles, the United States Air Force began to fly missions at a lower altitude where the enemy radar would have more trouble tracking its target. But at these lower altitudes, the XB-70 Valkyrie would be much less effective. So much, in fact, that it would not perform better than the B-52, the bomber it was meant to replace. Mission Look at range that! That is such a bizarre-looking shape, isn't it? ...economy would also suffer when flying lower. Another nail in the coffin for the XB-70 project Ooh. was the development of ICBM missiles in the late 1950s. The Valkyrie was specifically designed to carry the heavy nuclear weapons, but now the ICBMs threatened the role of the aircraft. President Eisenhower was not a big believer in the Valkyrie project, as he saw no real need for the aircraft. His main points against it were the same as the above-mentioned ones. Rockets and missiles were a threat, and ICBMs were a cheaper, more effective way right. of doing the same thing, he said. He also pointed out that the aircraft, that was still in development, would be obsolete by the time it was ready for full-scale manufacturing. Technology would simply have caught up to the Valkyrie. The Eisenhower administration cut the project to a single prototype. Kennedy, however, endorsed the XB-70, and it actually became part of his election campaign to do so. But at the time he became president, the XB-70 Valkyrie project had already cost equal to almost $7 billion Jeez. today. A hefty sum for a bomber. So in 1961, he canceled the project. It had become too expensive and unnecessary. Instead, Kennedy changed the XB-70 program to a research project. The Valkyrie was perfect for exploring the effects of supersonic flight and propulsion. North American Aviation completed the first prototype called AV-1 in May 1964 in Palmdale, California. A second prototype, the AV-2, quickly followed in October the same year. A third prototype was planned but got cancelled. Wait, is there September only one prototype left? What happened to the other ones? Or maybe I misheard. 
1964, the first XB-70 embarked on its first flight. The Valkyrie first went supersonic when it reached Mach 1.1 on the third test flight on October 12, 1964. It first surpassed Mach 3 on October 14, 1965, where the AV-1 reached Mach 3.02 at 70,000 feet. The AV-2 followed its sister's footsteps and became the one to hold the record for the highest Have speed of the two prototype aircraft. <laughs> That's crazy. In April 1966, the AV-2 reached and maintained a top speed of Mach 3.08 for 20 minutes. A month later, the AV-2 flew at Mach 3.06 for 32 minutes and covered a distance of 3,900 kilometers, or 2,400 miles, in the 91 minutes flight time. Tragedy struck on June 8, 1966, when the second XB-70 prototype was destroyed in a crash after a mid-air collision with its F-104N chase plane. What? A collision? What? Two people were killed and one was severely injured so during the accident. Accident? The loss of the second aircraft, which was much more capable than the first, was a huge setback. Testing, however, continued until February 4, 1969. Ultimately, the first XB-70 logged 83 flights, totaling 160 hours and 16 minutes, while the second XB-70 logged 46 flights, totaling 92 hours and 22 minutes, according to NASA. The XB-70 Valkyrie last went supersonic in December 1968. Damn. In February the following year, the Valkyrie AV-1 took its final flight to the National Museum of the United States Air Force near Dayton, Ohio. It's still on display there. The XB-70 Valkyrie was indeed ahead of its time. Despite a turbulent life from development to retirement, the futuristic yeah, supersonic bomber that's amazes... Yeah, I was thinking it looks super, super futuristic. That's exactly the thoughts that I had. ...with its looks, performance, and history. It was a product of the Cold War, where experts thought that Mach 3 speeds and higher altitudes could protect a bomber carrying nuclear weapons. But development costs and advances in technology eventually made the XB-70 Valkyrie unnecessary. Instead, the bomber was used in a research project aimed to study supersonic flight. The Valkyrie generated valuable insights about supersonic flight, insights that were later okay. used in other military aircraft. Okay. So it wasn't for nothing. Crash in 1966 became a darker chapter in the history of the aircraft, but the remaining Valkyrie continued its work in research and eventually went on display in 1969 in a museum in Ohio. The XB-70, while a technological wonder at the time, was the wrong plane for the wrong time. It came at a time when ballistic missiles were thought to be supplanting manned bombers. Moreover, it was being developed at a time when it was increasingly apparent that high speed and high altitude were not sufficient protection against surface-to-air missiles gotcha. or the next generation of Soviet fighters. Though its intended role as a strategic bomber was unsuccessful, the Valkyrie project contributed to later projects like the B-1B Lancer bomber, the SR-71 Blackbird spy plane, and other projects. More's the pity, it would likely have been the fastest bomber ever. Look at that! Like, what a bizarre looking shape! Even now, I feel like it still looks pretty futuristic. Just the shape of it. It looks like a space aircraft or something. How interesting. Unbelievable. So there's one left, so I must have misheard. I thought there were three, and one was in a crash. They're so sad about the crash. Also, though, I just can't believe someone survived a crash like that. Like, I just assumed that everyone in, involved in that crash would have died, but 
One person survived. That's crazy. Whoa. Wow, what the heck? It kind of looks like one of those flying squirrels. Do you know what I mean? I might be a weirdo for saying that. <laughs> Y'all are probably like, Courtney, why you got to compare this amazing aircraft to a gosh dang squirrel? Why do you have to do us like that? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> that was so interesting. Uh, yeah, never seen that plane before. Not that I can remember anyways. I feel like I would have remembered a plane like that if I'd seen it. Because it's very unusual looking plane. Right? I guess I don't know too much about it just because it was never... They never made a lot of them. But that was like the B-2 bomber as well. I... Before, like a few years ago, I'd never seen the B2 bomber either, so I'm just like clueless, and this is why I do reaction videos so, so I can learn, you know, all about uh, military aircraft and various other anything really. I love this, I love doing reaction videos, you guys, and I'm really glad that you guys enjoy them as well. And I really appreciate you guys watching along with me. So, yeah, leave your thoughts down below, let me know what you guys thought about the video, um, yeah, and any extra information that you might have. Um, maybe if you're from America, you will probably know about this aircraft, surely. I don't know. I'm, I'm not too sure. But uh, yeah, leave a comment down below. By the way, guys, I'm going live tomorrow on Tuesday, 25th of October at 8 p.m. USA Eastern Time. So hopefully you guys can make it there. I'm super, super excited to be chatting with you guys on YouTube live tomorrow so yeah i'm excited for that hopefully you guys can make it and say hello if you do come along um you know the good thing about live video is that we can interact in real time and talk to each other so i'm super excited but guys thank you so so much for watching today's video like give this video a thumbs up if you did like it and i'll see you all in my next video or at the live stream tomorrow bye guys mm -hmm.